Imagine you're about to cross a street. The light is red. You look to the left, to the right. No cars are coming, and you're in a hurry. So why not just cross quickly? I mean, who's watching, right? In China, everyone is. It was a time when China used political indoctrination and a little red book to keep its population in check. But now the internet, well, their intranet, and big data are helping them create a hyper-surveilled society eerily reminiscent of dystopian novels. You see, keeping track of 1.4 billion people is no easy feat, and in order to do so, China has invested in various surveillance technology projects. You've probably heard of all the Black Mirror-esque tech advances such as facial recognition glasses, live CCTV recognition technology, and all that Orwellian jazz. Unfortunately, that's not where all this stops. You're watching Explore Mode, and today we're going inside China's surveillance state. Let's start with their most popular ongoing surveillance project, the infamous social credit system. It was first announced back in 2014 and, according to state documents, is currently in its planning period. It is said to be mandatory in all cities across the country and become fully operational by 2020. So, pretty soon. The system is meant to reinforce trust between citizens, private companies and government entities, as well as establish and complete a social credit system and commend sincerity and punish insincerity. Simply put, China's social credit system rewards good behavior with points and punishes bad behavior by deducting them. The higher your score, the more benefits you get to enjoy. The lower your score, the more privileges you lose. The system takes into consideration an individual's credit history, behavior, social contribution, and even interpersonal relationships. Chinese tech giants like Tencent and Alibaba are both harvesting data that could be integrated into the system. According to a 2017 report by Quartz, the two companies have launched an app version of the social credit system. The apps evaluate consumers based on their spending habits and interpersonal relationships. Although the system hasn't launched yet, there have been pilot projects in several different cities in China. All of them operate in a different way. According to Wired, China's eastern city of Rongcheng gives all its citizens 1,000 points to start with. Do a good deed and you get more points as well as social recognition. Make a mistake and get points deducted and privileges revoked. According to reports by The Conversation and ABC Australia, positive behavior in some cities can be rewarded with free access to gym facilities, shorter waiting times in hospitals and higher possibilities to enter prestigious universities. On the other hand, behaviors listed as punishable offenses including cheating in video games, jaywalking, causing public disturbances, or even walking your dog without a leash can have severe consequences. According to a report from the National Public Credit Information Center obtained by the Associated Press, in 2018, China banned citizens from buying flight tickets 17.5 million times and barred them from purchasing train tickets 5.5 million times. The report also states that 128 people were banned from traveling due to unpaid taxes. Individuals could be penalized by blocking them from taking senior management roles or legally representing a company if they didn't have enough points. The records show China applied this penalty 290,000 times. Companies that were blacklisted for failing to repay loans and promote false or misleading advertising could face losing access to bank loans or even be barred from importing goods. But how do Chinese authorities obtain all this information? Well, that's where the Golden Shield Project and Big Data come in. The Golden Shield Project is a database-driven mass surveillance initiative that first rolled out in the early 2000s and continues to serve as a foundation for all surveillance and censorship efforts in China. Through this database, China has access to every citizen's and entity's records, facilitating the enforcement of a social credit score system. The now famous Great Firewall was one of the first initiatives under the Golden Shield project. Fast forward to today, and now the country is developing and testing different surveillance programs using cutting-edge technology. Earlier this year, researchers working with the Chinese People's Liberation Army developed CCTV cameras embedded with artificial intelligence to track the movements of civilians across the country. 
According to new scientists, the program dubbed EnsembleNet was trained using clips from CCTV footage and is supposedly 90% accurate. The program will be able to scan body shapes and facial features, which will then be used to search a database. It will also be able to identify a person even if they're in disguise or if their back is faced towards the camera. CNET reports that AI-powered CCTV cameras have already been used by Chinese authorities to track down fugitives. China plans to have over 600 million of these AI-powered CCTV cameras by 2020, according to QDaily, a Chinese online publication. But wait, there's more. Way more. In July 2018, China rolled out a new vehicular tracking system. So, a system that would track cars and the people driving them. The Wall Street Journal reported that Chinese authorities claimed its main goal was to study and improve congestion, thereby reducing pollution. They also mentioned the technology could be used to combat the rays of vehicular terrorist attacks. Nothing to do with surveillance or anything. Right. In October 2018, a similar program was deployed. The South China Morning Post reported that Chinese authorities were using facial recognition, fingerprint analysis, and temperature-taking thermal scans on drivers who were crossing the Hong Kong to Hai Macau Bridge. The technology will match the driver and car with pre-registered immigration data. Once clear, the driver could move on. The technology was developed by a company called Intellifusion, which claims it is 99.5% accurate. Citing Chinese media, Reuters reported that the facial recognition technology would also be used to warn yawning drivers for safety. If they're found yawning three times, an alarm would go off. Most recently, Chinese police from the cities of Beijing, Shanghai, and Chongqing are testing a new surveillance technology that analyzes live videos and stores data of how a person walks. According to the South China Morning Post, the program can detect someone's walk from 50 meters away, regardless of whether they're facing the camera. It does this by creating silhouettes of the people in videos and studying their body contour, their arm movement while walking, whether they have a toe-in or toe-out gait, among other elements. All these components allow them to identify each person's unique walking style. To all you smarty pants out there, developing a fake limp or covering up your legs won't stop the AI system from recognizing you. Huang Yongzhen, chief executive of Waitrix, told the SCMP, Covering your legs would reduce the recognition score, but we analyze all of a person's body when evaluating walking style. These forms of extreme surveillance are now being used against minorities who are not only aggressively monitored, but also forcefully enslaved. China is trying to force the country's predominantly Muslim Uyghurs to become more subservient to the party. The government has attained up to a million people in re-education camps, according to the New York Times. Fortune reports that part of the surveillance effort is to collect biometric data such as iris scans, fingerprints, voice scans, and DNA. Human rights groups and Uyghur activists say a comprehensive DNA database could be used to chase down Uyghurs who resist conforming to the campaign. According to China's official propaganda agency Xinhua, nearly 36 million people in Xinjiang took part in the so-called Physicals for All program from 2016 to 2017. On top of that, Chinese authorities seem to possess the technology to track the live location of millions of Uyghurs. On February 14, a Dutch security researcher called Victor Gevers found a Chinese database that had been left open on the internet for months, reports ZDNet. The database belongs to a Chinese video-based crowd analysis and facial recognition technology company called SenseNets. Gevers told ZDNet that the leaked database contains sensitive and detailed information on roughly 2.6 million users, including their names, IDs, gender, nationality, home addresses, age, and even their employer. Each user was also linked to a list of GPS coordinates and locations where that user had been seen. The database also had a list of trackers connected to GPS coordinates. These trackers seemed to be the locations of CCTV cameras. Some of them were tagged with names that specified where they were located, like mosque or restaurant. And if you thought local authorities were exempt from scrutiny, well, you thought wrong. China has also developed an anti-corruption AI system appropriately called Zero Trust, made specifically to identify corrupt public officials. The South China Morning Post reported it was developed by the Chinese Academy of Sciences and the Chinese Communist Party's internal control institutions to monitor, evaluate, or intervene in the work and personal life of public servants. 
Zero Trust can cross-reference more than 150 protected databases in central and local government systems. It is designed to detect property transfers, infrastructure construction, land purchases, and house demolitions, according to one researcher involved with the program. The system was built to detect unusual increases in bank savings, new car purchases or bidding for government contracts under the name of the official or one of his or her family or friends. It then calculates the probability for those actions to be corrupt and if authorities need to be alerted. Zero Trust was only rolled out in 30 counties and cities, but managed to catch 8,721 government officials engaging in embezzlement, abuse of power, misuse of government funds, and nepotism. Only some were sentenced to jail time. However, most were allowed to keep their jobs after receiving a warning or a minor punishment. The system seems to be working quite well. However, public officials in certain counties are not too keen on being monitored. According to the SCMP report, some officials in Shosui County are questioning the AI's right of access to sensitive databases. The irony is not lost on us. Clearly, Chinese institutions and companies are doing a lot to harvest all the data they want, but there's also help coming from the outside. Since 2014, China has been investing in building its own Silicon Valley. One of its goals is to transform Guizhou, a mountainous province in southwest China, into a hub for big data, and so far, it's succeeding. In 2018, Apple Inc. announced a big move. According to The Verge, it would be opening a new database center for its Chinese iCloud in Guizhou, as well as begin hosting its iCloud encryption keys in China, instead of the US, where it had been operating. All this along with a 1 billion US dollar investment, according to a report from Xinhua Net. They also reported that Amazon and Microsoft signed similar deals. It is clear why this raises privacy concerns, considering all data would have to be reviewed by Chinese officials before transferring abroad. Evidently, China's surveillance revolution is in full force, and it will not stop anytime soon. The New York Times reports that by 2020, China's streets will be monitored by roughly 300 million cameras, and China's law enforcement plans to spend an extra $30 billion in surveillance technology. All these efforts are sold to the Chinese population as an investment for their future and safety for the nation. But who is actually paying the price? Thanks for watching this episode of Explore Mode. All the links to all our sources are in the description box below. So take a look if you want to do a little of your own exploring. If you're new, make sure to hit the subscribe and bell button. And of course, the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next Friday. In the meantime, leave your explore mode on.